After experiencing Starfield for now what would be over 100 hours, I can officially and confidently say, I am small. Starfield is so much what I expected, yet so much more what I didn't. And you know what? I'm okay with that, because if Bethesda has shown me one thing, it's that they take the unexpected and work it into something that we've never seen before. The things that make their games last for generations, and Starfield is no exception. You see, as games evolve and grow in terms of scale, length, density, freedom, there are sacrifices made in order to achieve something actually worth playing. People see that as a threat or cutting corners, but until you actually experience those cut corners, you'll never truly realize how much they will benefit a game like this. What's ridiculous is that everybody dumped on No Man's Sky for featuring a bajillion empty planets that you fly to, scan a bug or something, then leave never to return. Obviously the years helped that game massively, but it begs the question, why are some nerds so hyper fixated on wanting things in Starfield that they complained about in other games? Now I'd say the world of Starfield, but at this point it's just straight up the universe, is made in a way that doesn't make exploration a pointless boring endeavor of mediocrity. Like like something games do just to boast, big open world here, get ya big open world. But this is proven time and time again, even in their less popular titles, that they know how to make a world worth exploring because they breathe life and purpose into them. The one major question I often ask myself when I play an open world game nowadays is if this world is unique to this game. Think about Elden Ring. That open world is made for that game. GTA 5, every inch was used, detailed and purposed. Cyberpunk created a city so beautiful and thematic that you could just wander the streets and feel like you got your money's worth until you'd fall through the map. But then some games have giant open worlds just to say they do, but they're empty, generic, purposeless. And honestly, you feel like you could just copy and paste it into any number of games. So then, how does Starfield, with a thousand plus planets and only a select few with main locations, actually hold up against their other worlds? Well, very well. Separating the main locations from the procedural random stuff, Bethesda's created hub locations so crammed with detail in life that although the amount of people named Citizen for a Bethesda game is a bit disappointing, it makes sense. Fallout 4 had a couple NPCs called Residents, 76 had the Settlers and the Raiders, and in the end, to me at least, it's not about the name, it's about if they're stupid. But in Starfield, everyone's doing something, and that makes places feel alive. Unlike GTA or Cyberpunk, where they wander aimlessly for the most part, these people are actually doing stuff. However, their worthlessness shines in the face of things like crime, but we'll talk about that later. The cities of Starfield aren't just locations you'll look at and leave, but places you actually want to dive into and explore. Talk to people, check out the shops, check out the ships. These places aren't meant to be a dot to connect to a bigger dot. The game is just so extensive that things as massive as a city are trivialized to portray a sense of depth and scope. You are very small and so is everyone else, yet you take the time to invest even in the perceived little things. And that brings me to the controversial topic, procedural generation, which most don't realize that this dates back to even games like Skyrim. But man, it has been fun watching nerds cry about this. I think everyone saw 1,000 planets and immediately figured, well, no Man's Sky emptiness all over again. Then the devs talked about planets being fully explorable, but having landing zones that create an instance, so to speak, filling that area with things to do, people complained again. However, we still should take into account things said like this that aren't exactly wrong, except for they admit the detail that you do have to move your ship from time to time. And let me be clear, when I say instance, I'm talking about an area that feels half as large as the Mojave from New Vegas, and not empty. I get that some people would rather walk for three hours and find nothing interesting, but at least the whole planet is open. This made me realize how little I wanted that. To sacrifice being able to run around an entire planet for having an entire zone that is filled with things to do like bandit camps or robot facilities, caves, dungeons, plants, animals, that sort of stuff. Starfield takes what an entire planet in No Man's Sky does, and sorry for always comparing it to that, but I feel like that's what people are wondering here, and brings it 
to an area. And once again, a unique area with biomes and terrain. You know, I've come across dense forests, mesa, deserts, mountains, and some of them all combined. And oftentimes, it'll stop you in your tracks even when you're being chased by a giant lizard wildebeest just to watch the sunrise over the faraway mountains. It feels a bit like Minecraft did when you first stepped in, and after you get used to that feeling, that's when the game begins. And if you hate the area and come to the border, guess what? You just move your ship over and boom, next area. But as you leave the planet, space exploration on the other hand is lackluster. You'll have the odd space station run by bandits or happen upon a fight, but for the most part, there's not a whole lot of reason to fly around up there. You'll think, I'll fly to that planet, but you won't because it'll take you way too long and nothing happens. So for those of you looking for an interesting space exploration aspect, you'll be a little bit let down. But for the people that were skeptical on how planetary exploration would feel compared to your favorite previous Bethesda titles, it's different, but in a good way. And this is before the modders are gonna go absolutely nuts and like build New York or something. Well, the other main thing that Starfield managed to do both well in and not is the RPG stuff. Even though the game was compared to the likes of Oblivion in terms of role-playing, I don't see it a whole lot. In ways it is, for example, in Oblivion you mindlessly jump from Cyrodiil to Bruma to level up athletics, and in Starfield you just scam a skill point into certain gun talents and now you need to kill 30 people with that weapon to get the next tier unlock. It's not bad, it's just simplistic. Even Skyrim felt like you had to play a certain way to build a character, but in Starfield you could literally just decide, I'm gun guy now, and become that super quick if you have the points. I'm a bit harsher on this part of the game than other areas because I was really expecting a lot more usage of the background system, but in the end that just kind of feels like you get some quick skills. In my hundred hours I barely encountered moments where that was actually useful, unlike say Baldur's Gate 3 where it impacts every conversation. You can still have those choices and consequence moments which is nice, and you can choose to just attack everyone or convince them you're right, but in terms of options, it's limited. It feels very yes or no or violence. It doesn't branch out, but it stays fairly simple like Skyrim, which over the years I realized is actually pretty basic in terms of consequences beyond crime. So you're not gonna find Mass Effect minus Andromeda levels of RPG in Starfield. It, it just isn't that intricate, unfortunately. And your, your traits only pop up a handful of times in dialogue. Most of it felt similar to the cyberpunk life paths, a bit of a letdown. And finally, crime stuff. In terms of dialogue, it's okay. You can be a huge jerk, you can be a pirate, a murder psycho. Some of the things you can say are pretty intense, but in terms of acting crazy outside of that, it doesn't really feel like it matters. You can open fire in town and unless you hit someone, no one cares. Shove a gun in a guard's face, nothing. Sneaking around, nope. Anything that looks criminal isn't until either someone is hurt or something is stolen. But even then, I walked around with a 5,000 credit bounty and not a single guard stopped me until I talked with one. Wait, you're on the wanted list. So not only does this make being a criminal other than a space pirate feel underwhelming, the crowds of people feel fake. Elder Scrolls and Fallout citizens reacted to your actions. Guards and people commented on you walking around with your weapons out or sneaking around. But in Starfield, it's as if that's just normal that you open fire in public. Well, unless you... But Starfield honestly looks and feels great. I know a lot of people are ragging on the graphics and the animations, and I, I just don't get it. Sure, compare it to whatever you want, but to me, this game looks way above average. And to show you how drastic the animations have changed, here's Fallout 76, their previous title. You want something? You take it. I was wondering when you'd work up the nerve to show your face around here, 76. And now here's Starfield. Anyway, I don't want to bore you with the details of my business all day. You're here to shop. Now, I'm not just gonna suck up here. I do realize that games like Cyberpunk and Horizon look leagues above what most games can achieve, but even up against those types of games, Starfield has a look about it, like every unique game should have. It's not generic, it's artistic and stylized, and you'll often come across those moments where you just stop and stare. And it's so open-ended to your possibilities, and even after a hundred hours of gunfights with randomly generated bandit camps, space battles that I cannot win unless I lower the difficulty or buy a better ship, or just generally exploring planets, it's so well detailed to the point where you really do feel like you're making this universe your own. And the building, the building! 
Finally! After years of horrendous Fallout 4 building, needing mods to feel good, Starfield has revamped all of that, so throw away those mega blocks. We're playing with Lego. It took me quite literally 75 hours before I finally started building my first base, and even then, I barely built it up because I put something down and then I'm like, ah, oh, I need tungsten. And then when I find tungsten, I also find a cave. Then I find a base, then I find a facility, fly to another galaxy, buy a new ship, and all of a sudden it's been 15 hours and all that I have at my base is a couch. Starfield is so open-ended that the easily distracted will never have a base, and the focused will build Los Angeles before even starting the main campaign. And before I continue, I would never forgive myself if I didn't at least comment on the detail that most overlook in reviews, and that's the music. I don't know about you, but when I'm working, I'll slap on those Skyrim atmospheres and listen to that bad boy all day. Anon Zur has produced what I can only describe as a heavily Fallout-influenced orchestral masterpiece, but from space. With a game this large, music sells the moments. Music inspires the memories. Just like the marinating of a steak, music is what brings out the flavor of the main attraction you're taking in. A compliment that, without it, is just another piece of meat you could get somewhere else. And Starfield creates a musical atmosphere for every moment. Just wanted to make sure you remember that when you're encumbered slow walking back to your ship at sunset. The combat and gunplay is comparable to the experience jump from New Vegas to Fallout 4. Better in every way. Not only are there mechanics now to make fights way more engaging, like corner peeking and such, but the boosting around on jetpacks and the crouch sliding around, low gravity mind fights, enemies of all sorts, the combat is very fun. The space combat, on the other hand, is brutal, and in a good way. I found myself lowering the difficulty on multiple occasions, cause holy, when you get two or three ships on you and you do not have the fortune of Elon Musk to afford an actual tanker, you're dead. It doesn't matter if you've played Elite Dangerous for a billion hours, these guys will shred you to bits. And that just makes you want to ditch everything you're currently doing to save enough money to get a new ship. The systems in place make you feel like you're always getting slightly better, but never enough to be too comfy. And speaking of ships, the ship builder is just another thing to marvel at, because Bethesda always goes nuts with their new innovations. This thing makes me feel like a genius and a complete moron at the same time. Because why can't I have a ship that's just a thousand guns and 50 thrusters? Fallout felt like you barely spent any caps. Skyrim was the same. But in Starfield, you never have a shortage of things to buy, and shipbuilding will consume your credits faster than eating a pound of raw beef. So where the RPG elements feel a little lacking, the gameplay makes up for massively in terms of things to do. And that just scratches the surface. The game just keeps opening up the more you explore it, and the more you discover, the more quests pop up, people are introduced, and sometimes all it takes is you getting caught accidentally sneaking contraband to open up a whole new world of questing. Starfield is Bethesda's expansive world building at its finest. And without spoiling anything, Starfield actually tells a great story with plot twists that are a level above what they usually go with. The characters are incredibly lively, and not just the companions who never seem to shut up about your full inventory. I also wish to be prepared for any situation, but there are practical limits. No. Already I've been roped into so many quests just through talking to a random person or flying to a system and finding out there's an entire civilization there even without anyone pointing it out to me, I was just passing by. Long story short, like seriously, the main campaign is huge, this game is no shortage of quests to do. I feel like after Fallout 76 questing, free Wastelanders update, it left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, falling so short of what Bethesda's usual standard is. And a lot of open-ended games have such pointless questing, and, and not to say that Elder Scrolls and Fallout don't have their fair share of fetching, but for the most part, there's a good story being told, there's a want to do everything. So amidst the fact that there absolutely is gonna be fetch quests, Starfield reminds you that Bethesda knows what they're doing with story questing. Listen, I'm a sucker for Bethesda games, I'm not even gonna hide that. That's because I know their games grant me an experience that I'm not gonna find anywhere else and one that I can revisit and it's not gonna get old. I'm still playing Oblivion and Skyrim, Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4 all these years later 
because like a Toyota Camry, Bethesda builds these things to last. They're gonna have their bugs and issues, no one's dismissing that, or they might not even hit the mark like 76, but Starfield is going to be that game where in 10 years down the line when Elder Scrolls 6 is 6 years old and Fallout 5 is 2 months from launch, you're still gonna be playing this. People are still gonna be modding it, and every time you play it, it's gonna be new again but familiar. Just like if Fallout 4 was your first Bethesda game, or Morrowind, like me. Because with these games, time only makes them better. And mods. Lots and lots of mods.